In this screencast, we'll show you how to create agent landing pages. Agent landing pages are content pages that have the ability to override the assignment process and assign leads to a specific agent based on the agent landing page that they arrive to the website through. Agent landing pages work by setting a cookie in a visitor's browser. This cookie dictates the lead assignment process by assigning the lead to the specified agent. A lead could feasibly arrive on an agent landing page like this, navigate away from the page to Google more information about, let's say, a neighborhood like Kailua or Lanikai, and upon returning to the site and registering later, the lead assignment will go to the agent of whose landing page was stored in the cookie first. So once again, as you see here, the same agent still gets the lead assignment despite going off-site and returning to register later. So now that we know how agent landing pages work, let's add an agent landing page. So let's get started. Creating agent landing pages is the same as creating content pages, with one new difference. The difference is that agent landing pages allow for the selection of an agent. So while logged in to the back end of your site administration page, under the content section, you can easily click the add button here but let's click the actual link that says Agent Landing Pages. So this is where all the agent landing pages are housed. They're organized in alphabetical order by slug, which is the latter part of the URL. If you have many pages to sort through, you can do a quick search to find the one you'd like to edit. For example, I can search the name Melanie, and it will pull up all agents with the name Melanie included in it. I can delete the page by selecting the check mark next to the name, and in the drop down menu, I can select the action to delete. Upon pressing go, I can run that action, but I don't want to do this, so I'll clear the search now. So, again, here my pages are organized by slug, but they can also be viewed by anchor text or page name, as well as the agent's name. You can do the same in the table to the right. But let's click on the link in the upper right hand corner that says add agent landing page. Now at the top of the page we have the option of adding a parent. What you add here will be used in the URL of the page. This is an organizational feature and can help you lay out your pages if you have a large number of them. Again, this is purely organizational and not terribly useful in most cases. But if you do elect to use a parent for your agent landing pages, be sure to include this when linking to this page. Next, we have the title, which will outline what the page is about. Most of the time, Google will use this as the text that is displayed when linking to your site in search engine results. As search engine practices evolve, we find this is used less often and that the text that is linked to it is determined by the search engines themselves. That said, it's still useful in providing context on what the page is about. So let's go ahead with Hawaii Realty International, James Keller. Then the description needs to include details that tell the user what it's about. So you want that to show up as something attractive to click on as well, since this is just the snippet that Google will usually use. So let's go ahead with work closely with James Keller to search all Oahu real estate listings on the island through a fast and easy MLS database. Next, we have the meta keywords. This is where you can put keywords in of what your page is about. Search engines once used this field to help rank sites on search result pages. This is no longer the case, but again, there is still value in providing additional context on what the page is about, and it may have additional meaning for social media sites. So next, we have our anchor text. This helps us to create the slug, which you'll use for linking to the website. Now, the slug is the actual text in the URL, and it's auto-generated from the anchor text field here. I'm going to enter James Keller Agent. Please note that the uppercase characters are converted to lowercase, and spaces are converted to dashes. Now, in the drop-down menu here, you'll want to select the name of the agent who you're making the page for. I'm going to select James Keller. So again, 
Building this page is going to be very similar to building content pages. So in the template drop down here, you'll want to select the template that best suits your page. But for this case, I'm going to build mine using the agent detail page because it's organized well for my purpose here. So I want to introduce the agent and have all properties follow the details with a quick search and no landscape image. So this is going to work for this case. But for a more in-depth look at details about these templates, we suggest you visit our docs page and reference the screencast that we've created for content pages. You can find that at docs.realgeeks.com. The next item on the agent landing page is content. This is where you'll add the body of the content of your page. It's very important that you not use any duplicate content or copy someone else's website like Google or Wikipedia. You need to uniquely write it. Copying content is only going to hurt you in the rankings because Google will know that the other site that had the content first is the authoritative site and you're never going to get ranked because you'll be read as a duplicate or copycat. So, if you are migrating from an old site or another document to this one and you don't want to write it freeform into this section, then you need to make sure that you copy it and paste it, not just straight from a Word document, because Word adds its own code into these editors. So if you're using a PC, you want to use Notepad. Or if you're using a Mac like I am, you'll want to use TextEdit. I already have text here that I've copied and I want to convert from rich text to plain text. This is done by going up to the format window and selecting the make plain text option in the drop down menu. After converting your text to a plain text format, you'll want to copy that text, return to your main browser where your page editor is, and paste the text into your content section. Here, you can highlight your headers one at a time and select the correct formatting options that suit your style as follows. Now again, I'm building this page out using the agent detail page, so the fields to follow might vary for your case. But here I'll enter the agent's details, which will sit at the top of the page. So I'll input my address, followed by my company name, and then my email address. Fax number. Cell number. As well as the agent's name. And then the next section is listed as testimonials. So here you can add a few facts about the agent's record and sales or details that you think will better support the page. This particular template puts this above the sidebar, so we encourage users to list their testimonials in a bulleted list form. In the next section, you can upload the agent's photo. Now, if you want to add an image, you're going to have to click on this little mountain here, which will take you to our Insert Edit Image button. This leads you to the image browser where you can click the file browser, find your image, choose the little arrow, and it gives you a few options. So I want my image to be smaller and to constrain its proportions. So I'm going to enter 250 pixels, and the dimensions will adjust accordingly. Then I'll hit OK and the image will populate the window. Next, we have the option to override the landscape image. Now, this will vary based on your site settings and the template you've chosen to build this page with. I'm leaving my selection on the default choice so that the page follows the templated criteria, which does not include a landscape image. To learn more about overriding the landscape image, please check out our docs page and visit our screencasts that review adding area pages and content pages. So our next item here is the sidebar and footer option. What really gives our solution a lot of flexibility is that you're able to create as many sidebars and footers in our system and pull in whatever sidebar you'd like for each page. You can even make a different sidebar for each page. 
but here I've chosen my default sidebar, which I've configured to include a list of Hawaiian islands, popular neighborhoods, useful information, and our seller lead generation tool widget. Now, the next thing is property display search options. That's if you want to pull in property listings as some content on the page. So let's title this Featured Hawaii Properties. This will be the heading above the properties. Let's select 10 properties to be displayed on the page. And I'm going to place the properties below the content of my page by selecting that option in the drop down menu here. That's because I would rather have the visitor come here and get the details of the agent, followed by the quick search, and all the properties could go beneath those things. So then I'll want to create the search. Now you can get really specific here and create a search with detailed parameters based on area, pricing, foreclosures, square feet, and so on. But I'm going to keep this pretty simple and just focus on promoting homes in Lanikai. So I'll select the area of Kailua, and the neighborhood of Lanikai, and then I'll hit the button to create the search. In the results to follow, I can confirm my search criteria and see how many properties are showing up based on what I've entered. So here we see 41 results. I'll sort these results by highest price first, and then I'll hit yes to confirm the search options. Now of the 41 results, keep in mind, it will only show me the 10 highest price listings that suit my criteria because that's what I entered above. So next we have the search form display options. Here you can help take the guesswork out of coming up with the correct search by pre-filling the quick search with the fields that best describe the page we're making. So first let's change the title. I'm going to call this Hawaii Real Estate Search. Keep in mind though that if I don't enter anything in the field here, it will pull in a title based on my default site settings. So next, I'll set the search defaults of the form. I'll click this button here, and I'm gonna keep this very vague so that users can edit it to their liking upon landing on the page. So I'm just gonna select the island of Oahu, and I'll leave the rest of the options open. But as you see here, you can get very specific with this in terms of area, beds, baths, pricing, and so on. Then I'll save the search. Now, if everything looks good to go on the page, you can hit the save button here in the bottom right hand corner so that the page goes live. So you can always link to pages throughout your site, let's say in the sidebar or in the content section, but agent landing pages can also be added as links on your personal business cards. So upon meeting a person and handing out your card, that potential lead can then begin the process through that agent landing page URL. That way, the lead assignment will go directly to you. So let's take a look at the agent landing page. So here's the page with the agent's name at the very top, along with all supporting details, including an image, contact info, company info, and the content as we added it on the back end. Then there's a quick search in the right side of the page. And if we scroll down, you can see the testimonials under it, which were auto formatted to appear in a list. The sidebar follows that. And of course, in the most of the meat of the page here, you have the 10 featured properties filling it, just as we said on the back end. So I can click on one of these properties and you can see that the capture form appears immediately. So I'll sign up and I'll enter all my details here. So following this on the agent's end, the agent, James Keller, will be notified of the direct lead assignment through the lead manager and his email notifications. This is because the lead came through his agent landing page through his business card. So there you have it. You can continue to build agent landing pages and test their functionality using various content page templates that we offer. Keep in mind though, that when testing agent landing pages functionality, remember that the cookie is set on a permanent basis. So because of this, it's recommended to use a private mode such as Google Chrome's incognito mode or Firefox's private browsing mode
to run test signups. These modes will clear existing cookies in that particular session, allowing you a clean path to create and test a lead. So thanks for joining us in learning how to create agent landing pages. Please check out our docs at docs.realgeeks.com to edit and add other page styles, sidebars, navigations, upload images, widgets, videos, along with all other technical features for your Real Geeks website.